Hi, this is Peter Schiff. It is Tuesday, April 14th, 2009. First, let me talk a little bit today about the retail sales numbers that came out and apparently disappointed people on Wall Street who were surprised by the drop in retail sales. I mean, first of all, what do people expect? We need retail sales to drop. I mean, one of the reasons the economy is in such trouble is because of all the retail sales that took place in the past that never should have taken place because the stuff was paid for with, with borrowed money. People bought things that they shouldn't have bought. And, and so now part of the solution to our problems is that we spend less money, that we, we, we buy fewer things in retail stores. So retail sales have to drop. That's part of the solution. That shouldn't be... Uh, resisted. The government shouldn't be trying to stimulate uh, additional retail sales. You know, what, what people say is, well, we need, we need all this spending because spending is 70% of our economy. That's nonsense. It's not. It's 70% of GDP. That's part of the problem. But GDP is not the economy, right? Spending is not economic activity. It's, it's the reward for economic activity. I mean, think about it this way. Let's assume you earn $50,000 a year. And then you spend $50,000 a year on goods and services. The way the government tracks GDP, your personal GDP is $100,000. The $50,000 you earn, and then the $50,000 you spend. But that's all nonsense. It's the same money. You know, if you lost your job, your GDP wouldn't just go down by 50%. It'd go down by 100%. Because if you're not earning the money, then you can't spend the money. So it's double counting, and we do that. And when we're really keeping track of our economy, it's not about how much we spend, but how much we make, how much we produce. That's economic activity. So we can't try to think that we have to maintain a consumer spending because that, that's what drives the economy. That's nonsense. That's, that's the reward for production. And the fact that so much of our GDP is now comprised of spending, that's the problem. The solution is that we spend less. We can't try to prevent that. Now, along those lines, I listened to President Obama's speech today. And, and basically, if you listen to the president speak, much of what he says is true. In fact, in many cases, he sounds like he's reading right out of Crash Proof. He says that the economy has, our economy was built on a phony foundation, that the foundation needs to be, we need to rebuild it on, on a more solid foundation. That's exactly what I've been saying. He says that we need to move from an economy where we borrow and spend to one where we save and invest. He says we need to go away from consumption to production, that we need to import less and export more. Well, that's exactly what I've been saying. All that is right. But the president's method from getting from where we need to be or from where we are to where we need to be is flawed. Everything he's doing is preventing. His plans are preventing that solid foundation from coming into existence. I mean, first of all, what does he want to do? He wants to stimulate more spending, right? He said that all economists agree, and of course they don't, that we government can't cut spending in a recession, that the last thing that the government should do is cut spending. Well, first of all, who are these economists that agree? These are all the economists that said everything was great a couple of years ago. These are the economists that didn't predict this crisis. The economists who did predict it, like myself, those of us in the Austrian school, we know that the government needs to cut spending, so we don't agree. See, what, what Barack Obama is trying to do is compensate for the fact that Americans are spending less. But we don't want to compensate for that. That's basically undoing all the good things that we're doing. Barack Obama pointed out that Americans' families are gathering around their dinner tables, and they're making the hard choices. They're cutting spending. They're recognizing that they don't have the wealth that they thought. Their house is not worth as much as they thought. They haven't saved enough. And so they're going to cut spending. That's all good. But now Barack Obama wants to undo that by having the government take on debt in their name, by spend money for them. Because remember, if individual families are broke, then the government is broke. Because the government can only get the money from the people. So if the people are too broke to spend, the government is too broke to spend in their place. And what good is it if individual families are trying to get out of debt, but then the government is piling on debt for them, obligating them to repay this debt, out of their income with future taxes, they're undoing everything that we're, that we're doing. And of course, when, when Barack Obama described the problem, and he, he did a pretty good job in some respects, but what he didn't mention was where it started. President Obama said the problem started in the housing sector. No, it didn't. 
It started with the Federal Reserve. It's the Federal Reserve that slashed interest rates to 1% that got the housing bubble inflating. They blew all the air into it. So to say that the problem got started with housing is wrong because he's trying to absolve the government from its real responsibility in what happened. And of course, also when Barack Obama talks about the fact that we have to rebuild the solid foundation, we do. But what is he doing? He wants to rebuild the foundation that he believes is right. He doesn't want the free market to erect that foundation. He wants to do it himself. And of course, it's not going to work. What does Barack Obama want? He thinks that what we need is the government to spend more money on education, the government to spend more money on health care. Well, you know what? We're already spending too much money in these areas. We need to free up those resources to be used more productively. We don't need to spend more on health care. That's not the solution. One of the reasons that health care, in fact, the, pri the primary reason that health care is so expensive is because the government is, is involved so much. And of course, education. You know, the president gave his speech in front of a bunch of university kids, and he talked about the need uh, for government-funded education. Well, the reason these kids are having to borrow so much money and they're graduating with mortgages and no houses is because the government has put so much credit into the educational bureaucracy that tuition is sky high. What we need is the government to get out of education and to get out of health care so these costs can come down so that we can have more resources to be used productively so we can actually resurrect the very foundation that Barack Obama knows that we need but whose very policies are preventing it from coming to existence. Right? All he's doing is trying to encourage more spending and more consumption as he's criticizing it. And he's preventing the necessary free market reforms from taking place. And then of course, you know, later on in the day, I, I, I saw uh, ben Bernanke, I guess, who was also uh, speaking today, fielding questions about the economy, about inflation, and about the dollar. And once again, he still is clueless. He still thinks that inflation isn't a problem, that they're going to be able to uh, deal with it later on. Of course, they can't. If they can't deal with it now, how are they going to deal with it a year or two from now when it's going to be an even bigger problem and it's going to be even more painful to resolve because we're going to be even more deeply in debt. And if the only weapon they have to fight the inflation is higher interest rates, think of how much more painful it's going to be when we're deep, more deeply in debt. Look at all the debt that the government is accumulating now. Look, think about how much more expensive it's going to be to service that debt uh, if, if the Fed's going to raise interest rates. This, this is all nonsense. We're getting nonsense from the Fed. We're getting nonsense from the president. But it's all very dangerous. And the powers that be are in the process of creating something, again, far worse than the Great Depression. Unfortunately, the tools that the government has at its disposal now are far more damaging than what we had back then. I think the general ignorance of basic economics is greater today than it was in the 1930s. And we don't have the discipline. We don't have, uh, we don't have as much respect for the Constitution, even though we didn't have too much respect uh, during the New Deal. And we don't have the discipline of a gold standard. Even though we tried to get around it uh, somewhat in the 1930s, there's no obstacle at all today. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again uh, either tomorrow or Thursday.